Hi, this is the Philosophical Angle, defining concepts in current media. I am your host, Chris Angle. I am the author of four books on philosophy, one of which is The Philosophical Equations of Economics. These books are available online, free for viewing at www.philosophypublishing.com. They are also available free upon request as an email attachment. Just go to that very website. Along with me are our panelists, Mark Brennan, professor at the Stern School of Business, New York University. He is also the American editor of the Quarterly Review of London, England, established 1809. Welcome, Mark. Hi, Chris. Also with us is Rick Samuelson. Rick graduated from Yale has an MBA from Wharton and an MA from Tufts. He is also retired head of securities, UBS Japan. Welcome, Rick. Thank you. The purpose of the philosophical angle is to examine the nature of the concepts being used in current media and compare the essence of the concept with the usages and circumstances in which the term is being used. The format of the philosophical angle is that your host will bring forth an opening statement on the nature of the concept for your consideration, and our panel will react with their criticisms, questions, their own definitions, etc. This week, the subject concept of usage is liberalism and the rioters. There were riots in London a while back. There were, or are, rioters in Greece. Of course, there are rioters in the Middle East. Throughout history, there have been riots. Here at the Philosophical Angle, we think riots throughout history have their various different motives. Recently, in the Mideast, it appears, there were riots against totalitarian regimes. Therefore, it seemed to be a revolt demanding human rights. In London, however, there were riots. Were they the result of the people seeking human rights? A liberal might say yes, that London was also the protest of human rights, and that is, the rights of the rioters to receive their right to their entitlements. Let's explore. The conservative might explain that this is balderdash. There are no rights involved. Let's start by defining the basic differences in the outlook of the liberal and the conservative. The traditional explanation is that the liberal believes that societal problems should be addressed primarily at the federal government level. The conservative believes that society's problems should first be addressed at the local government level after which it works itself up the line to the state and then to the federal government as a last resort. But there is an even more basic, substantial difference. The conservative mind assumes that others are naturally good. The liberal mind assumes that the motives of others are at best suspect, at worst evil. Thus. They know that they are ethically superior to others as they know that their own personal motives and behavior are good. As such, the liberal views those that are not so fortunate in society to be the victims of those who are bad, which are those that are fortunate. These victims must receive just compensation for their predicament. In order to solve their predicament, a liberal looks to the government to rectify the situation, thereby having the fortunate extend their, race for their resources, resources to societies less fortunate via government, taxation, and administration. However, there is a side effect for this class of victims. The human incentive index plummets to zero 
resulting in the victim class parentally looking to receive only, creating a class of dependent victims. So what, you said? What is this incentive index? Well, I'll explain. All decisions are made by sacrificing one's time, effort, material in an environment that includes risk and, the, and its flip side, opportunity, to obtain a reward. And thus, we can say that we make our sacrifice to receive our rewards. Checking our notes here, thus we see that a sacrifice equals a reward. Where the sacrifice equals our time, our effort, and knowledge and information admits, admits a, an environment of risk, we can abbreviate this S equals R, or that is sacrifice equals reward, and so one time sacrifice equals the reward, and thus one equals reward divided by the sacrifice, which is our index. As such, when the reward is great and the sacrifice and its attendant risk is nil, and the transaction has a very high factor, one would want to expect their reward as a matter of course. And further, the transaction with its nil sacrifice would be very convenient, and those who are receiving would be loath to give it up. When the content of their sacrifice goes to nil or low, the index skyrockets, and one gets spoiled brats. Ergo, riots in Greece and Britain. In normal decision making, as the risk goes up relative to the sacrifice, the decision becomes attractive. The conservative mind regards others as good and does not look to the federal government first to rectify their situation. It first looks to charity. If charity cannot solve their societal problems, it will look to the local government than to state government, and so forth. There is a reason that the conservative mind looks to charity first. It views the unfortunate person's situation as a tragedy, and as such, a natural depository for charity. As even charity does not come entirely free, it maintains an intact incentive rate. As charities, attempt to put people back to work, the ratio does not plummet to zero, which would obliterate <coughs> the incentive ratio. The liberal, on the other hand, looks to government to save their victims. And as we know, government is inefficient at everything it does. <coughs> we would like to suggest that a better course of action for the conservatives and the liberals compromise by letting the government take its funds of entitlement and donate them to charities. Let the charities administer them as the governments are inefficient and ineffective. And our incentive ratio will stay intact. Mark, I think uh, as Rick had to uh, leave uh, presently, uh, We'll start with you. Do you have any comment on this? Yeah, I have two comments. First of all, I think you've got it backwards, Chris. You said that conservatives assume that others are good and liberals assume others are bad. I think it's exactly the opposite. I think conservatives are reasonable enough to recognize that humans live in a fallen state and when given the option, they will cheat and do what's in their self-interest without looking out for others. But liberals think that everybody is just a great person who only needs to be empowered to realize the, the full fruit of his you know, uh, being that's not created by the creator. So you've actually got it exactly backwards, and I think that the Western thought and political philosophy would, would bear that out. The other thing is your solution to give the money from the government to the charities will be just as self-defeating as if it were to, if the charity were to be doled out by the government itself. The problem with government-run charities 
is not that they're inefficient or that they give people things that don't they don't deserve. It's that they never ask for anything in response. There is no responsibility on the part of the recipient to behave, change his ways, become a better person, stop drinking, stop doing drugs. So I always like to go back to the example of, let's say that your brother-in-law called you up and said, I'm, not, I'm running out of money, my kids need money. You would you know, call your sister and say, what's going on? She said, we're out of money. And you'd happily give them money. Now, if a month later you found out that they'd gone to Disneyland and lived it up like kings, you probably wouldn't give them money the next time they called. You would demand that there be paid. And what happened was the government took over the role of charities. It broke that chain of responsibility. And so to take the money, to steal the money from taxpayers, funnel it through the government, watch a lot of it just get dissipated in terms of waste, and then build out the charities, does not bring that responsibility chain back into practice. Well, that's pretty interesting. Uh, uh, you believe that uh, you brought up the word of responsibility, and that being uh, the chain that needs not to be broken in order to, uh, uh, to uplift society. Um, and. And so, uh, as I understand you, that... Oh, can I toss it? Let me toss out one more thing. Go ahead. Uh, yep. I'd be very uh, loath to connect or see any similarities between the riots in Greece and the riots in England. Just on a racial basis. Uh, it was Greeks rioting, and then in England, they were English people, but many of them were immigrants from the Caribbean and from... Uh, Southeast Asia. So there's our show on immigration coming back. Uh, you know, if these people don't assimilate or want to get with the game, and if society is willing enough to not ask them to assimilate and just give them whatever they want, or better yet, buy their passivity by just giving them free housing, free clothes, free food, then you have to understand that you're creating a powder keg that one day will explode when that when their iPods and cell phones are not as sufficient as people are actually working and accumulating more material wealth, they will get upset and jealous and we'll have activities like happened in England. The great thing is something totally different. It's, you know, we're writing about the right to retire at the age of 50 uh, and make Germans pay for it. And when we tell Greeks, no, Germans aren't going to pay for it at the age of 50, you've got to keep working yourself, that's when the Greeks get upset. So there the, these two rides, and it's probably no two rides that you can equate, but these two are especially disparate. Um, would not be the uh, the London riots be really the same? Uh, they were again over benefits coming from the government. One uh, being uh, uh, retirement benefits, one being uh, benefits by which they run their daily ri lives. Really aren't they uh, just of the same nature? I, I don't I don't think that was the cause of the London riots. What was, uh, what I, was don't, I don't think when, it's, when it was a bunch of eight old young men rioting London, that is not the same thing as a bunch of 50-year-olds in Greece rioting, not to mention the racial angles involved. Right. So uh, the, do you have a, a theory behind the London riots? Why they, um, why they uh, precipitated? I guess on a psychological level, I would, I would chalk a lot of it up to impulse control, the lack of impulse control. We've done a nice job of this. Country. People who can have no impulse control, we give them drugs like Adderall and Focarin, and we tell them they have, you know, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and we medicalize it, and we turn these people into zombies. Perhaps England is far advanced, or maybe I should say as far down the sewer as we are in that regard, but maybe you know, England might want to follow our lead and start medicating people who are otherwise going to be unproductive in society, lest they have more violent riots. You know, it also doesn't help when you have a riot and you have cops showing up who are not armed and willing to take it on. If you look at the riots in the 1960s, the places where cops were told shoot on sight didn't have riots the way other cities did. So if you can have rioters, you've got to meet it with, a, with, a, with an adequate response. Well, I certainly agree with that. And uh, yes, the, uh, uh, it was well reported in the news that the rioters were not faced really with any opposition, and so they uh, continued to yeah, do Yeah, unless, you know, unless, unless, like England, I hate to say this because, you know, they're part of our Anglophone world. Unless you're so self-hating that you wouldn't send troops out or police out to defend your property, defend innocent lives, because you're so self-hating, you think that these people have a right to do this, and despite all the, 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 the economic resources you've given them over all the years, that these people have some kind of divine right to destroy society, 
It's just the self-hatred is so deep. I don't know if anyone can recover from it. Well, that's absolutely right. They, they, and that's the essence. They feel they have the right uh, uh, to, to benefits and entitlements, which is, and, and, and in addition to that, uh, you mentioned responsibility. Well, right, right. Rights only come with duties and obligations. So you might legally have the right to a welfare check or to payments from the government, but you never, in the, case of the government, have a duty. And that's the main problem. That's what, I, that's what I was talking about before when you said, let's just give it to the government, have them build our charities. Once that happens, it's gone. You know, when your brother, when your brother in law flies to the Disney World, he had a duty to act responsibly with the money he gave, you gave him and to improve his life. He abrogated his duty, and therefore you won't give him any money anymore. And no one should, if that's what he's going to do. But we never impose that duty or remind recipients of government aid that that is their duty. And so you have situations like this that are complete insanity. Well, you're right, and I, I, I agree with that. <clears throat> and, um, and you're right that um, uh, rights are, 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 are along with obligations. And so when you don't have an obligation, uh, uh, to uh, and that goes back to my uh, incentive reward here. Really, uh, the uh, looking at the sacrifice uh, equals reward. You break up that sense of responsibility to uh, to showing up for a job or or to doing something in order to receive a reward. Your sacrifice is made in order to receive a, war, a reward, and uh, and and the same with the responsibility it comes along with that sacrifice. <coughs> um, That's right. Look, look at government housing. So we give people free housing, and if they want, they can behave like animals, and in many cases, they unfortunately do. But if you're trying to get a place to live on the free market, and you're a single mother with three teenage boys who are tearing up the place, your landlord will evict you. There's a self-correcting mechanism there that encourages proper behavior. Your landlord doesn't want your son's terrifying everyone else in the building, so he will evict you. Now, in a government-run housing project, your sons are free to do whatever they want. Until they murder somebody, you basically have carte blanche. You can live as you please, terrifying all the other, other residents, ruining their lives, and just making a mess of things. And again, no attached to, to behave like a normal human being, the way you would have to in the free market. Uh, uh, and uh, glaring in its uh, absence, uh, is uh, is property rights. So without a property right or the or the the sense of ownership, as you mentioned in public housing, without that sense of ownership, you'll have no sacrifice and you'll have no one uh, uh, looking to care for it and uh, looking to get receive a reward from the uh, from the sacrifice of of which is uh, which comes with property ownership. And so the uh, that's right. Often... In, in this case, there is no owner of the government housing. Essentially, the, the clients are not the people who live in it, but they're the people who occupy the same city, who pay their own rent, who who are happy that these people are being housed on the periphery, away from them, and won't cause problems. So it's a way of kind of warehousing what could otherwise be violent and dangerous citizens. That's how Western culture has become. That suddenly that's a better way to erase society. And but that's and that's exactly why I suggest that although you can't, um, uh, instead of just cutting off entitlements entirely, which is probably an impossibility now, uh, in in this day and age, but it could be uh, that you give that the government could give that to charities, and that's why I bring it up because charities demand something at least something in return, as, as uh, for the reward they'll ask for some sort of sacrifice. Well, Chris, at present, government gives tons of money to charities, and not all charities put the same demands on their recipients. So it doesn't work. Uh, you know, and in a free market where donors are encouraged, or if they care about where they're giving their money, are, are, are incented to find out and look for and invest in charities or donate to charities that do things the right way, and that's how it happens. Instead of having Hillary Clinton and Elliot Spitzer and other political demagogues decide which charities receive your money, which will lead to things like favoritism and payoffs. Correct. And complete again, a complete abrogation of any duty that might be there 
by chance, it's much better for you to give your money directly to charities. Not to mention that when your money goes to the government, there's going to be some friction. And when you put in $100 in the government, the charities are only getting $40. So yeah, if that, you know, correct. Union, you'll have unionized government work crews that have to dole out this charity money. You have to open an envelope. We'll have a union guy opening your donation envelope. We'll have another union guy endorsing your check. We'll have another union guy, you know. So the money just dissipates, and it's just silly. So you, you got to get off this this kick you have that government has to be somehow in the middle and handling the situation. Well, I uh, no, I uh, uh, I don't feel that the government should be in the middle. I'm just saying you, pragmatic, you said it three times now. Pragmatically speaking, it would be tough to take them out totally in uh, immediately. But that is well, the it ultimate. Can be done. I'm not I'm not asking for revolutionary change. I'm asking slow, gradual change that a conservative would buy into. Conservatives don't like radical change. They like change over time. Change that occurs naturally. And uh, and and I would uh, I would also. And so that's why I suggest Which is odd charities. because you, just, you introduced the show saying that conservatives assume others are good. We actually assume others are, are evil and living in a fallen state because humans will cut corners, they will act in their own self-interest, and they will do things that are not entirely altruistic. So we've got to be careful when dealing with them. Liberals just think everybody's just, you know, a great guy waiting to be uh, unsheathed to the world. Well, that's, in, that's uh, to, uh, getting back to the opening statement. Uh, that is something I'd, I'd like to explore a little further. I, I do believe that the conservative mind assumes that uh, in their transaction with other people, when they begin to cooperate, a conservative mind assumes that the other person, his motives are, are essentially good. Uh, and that is uh, the reason why uh, a conservative would, uh, would not want the government to be involved uh, with, uh, with, uh, 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 with, with the situations that where the government is involved in, is in the, uh, in, in the um, entitlements uh, that are so pervasive now in our society. Uh, so in welfare, uh, the, the, it is the liberal feels that uh, this person or these uh, people cannot bring themselves up from, uh, uh, from degradation or from their uh, lack of job. And so uh, the government must and has a duty to help them because they cannot help themselves because they are victims. And they are victims because they are victims of people who are not good. And if you, uh, uh, and, I, and it is my experience in listening to uh, liberals uh, throughout the media, they, they generally denigrate uh, the motives of others. And, uh, and, therefore, and therefore, I brought forth uh, this uh, possible definition uh, of the essence between a liberal and a conservative. Um, and That's fair. Liberals will only question the motives of those who are either in business or who study statistics or things like that. Right. Um, and uh, especially in someone who is business and successful, and more, the more he is successful, the worse they feel that his motives and his, his modus operandi, his, his, his very being, is evil because even profits are evil. And so to be Well, that's done, right, because you can only get rich by screwing people, as we all know. <laughs> Right, and therefore, I see this trend in their thought, and it seems that the more successful that, they, uh, that the person is, the more that they feel that, they're, uh, that they have evil uh, behind them, that their purposes are no good. And, and ergo, uh, the definition, and, there, and, and therefore, uh, they, uh, the, the willingness to let government, even though it's so inefficient in helping people, and, uh, and, and uh, destroys responsibility, as you have pointed out, um, and, and have made a shambles of, uh, of really uh, those that, uh, have been, that could have been helped have not been helped. Um, well, that's a question. You should talk to the Gingrich campaign. Those liberals have done nothing but smash the wealth accretion that Mitt Romney was able to pull off over his career and demagoguing, and what they can do is when the Gingrich campaign crashes on the shoals, they can sell for scrap value 
all these commercials that Nash Bain, the Obama campaign, because they will be perfect for that leftist. Isn't Just, you know, that, from one leftist mouth to another. Isn't that the truth? A shame on them for having let go that attack on, uh, on, on a man who, did a, uh, who has done a lot of good uh, in society and kept more jobs than uh, he is uh, uh, severed by, by probably 99 to 1. Um, bank capital is... Well, Chris, what, what, I mean, what do you expect? Our Republican Party is just to the right of the extreme left party of envy, the Democrats, and Newt Gingrich is the perfect example of a liberal Republican, somebody who's trying to drive this country to the ground just a little bit less quickly than the Democrats are. Um, yes, I, 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 I hesitate to go and speak about the uh, individual uh, uh, candidates. Um, but are we not allowed to do that on here? Uh, we are. We are. Uh, I'm just uh, not as uh, well-read and as expert in that area as uh, you and Rick are. But uh, yes, in listening to the debates... You know what? Kudos to you for not paying attention to it. It's all noise. It's a complete waste of time. And then when you hear the idiocy that comes out of their mouths, it's only proven time and again. So kudos to you for, not, for being outside the... Uh, this, this, it, I, I, can't even, I can't even call it a political debate. Whatever this moronic thing that's been going on for the last six months to try and select leftists will, will be the Republican Party against the Communists from the Democratic Party. Okay, uh, just one final, I'd like to ask you one final statement on the other uh, uh, definition that I mentioned between the liberals and conservatives, that conservatives should be asking uh, 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 the local first and build up to uh, the, the, the federal at the last part, and whether liberals tend to ask the federal government first uh, before others. Is that a, a reasonable historical analysis of, uh, of conservative versus uh, liberal? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think what you're kind of harping on is the Catholic theory of subsidiarity, which is where problems should be dealt with at the most local level first, and then only escalated as they can't be dealt with at the local level. Okay. But I can point to plenty of quote-unquote conservative programs in the United States that are from the federal level. Look at George Bush. Oh, this is recent. Your I was speaking historically nine. right from the last 200 years until present. So that was... Yeah, uh, no, it, it's, they, they just all, they all have their different constituencies, the, the different rent seekers that are forcing them to do things. So I, I wouldn't say that it was any more... It might be slightly more of a Democratic thing than a Republican, but they're both all about, you know, since the revolution in 1865, they changed the shape of the government. This country has been nothing about but centralization. Okay, Mark, I'd like to thank you very much for, uh, for uh, helping us with uh, our panel, as our panelist today, and uh, we have to conclude as we have run out of time here at the Philosophical Angle, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for viewing. Goodbye, Chris. Goodbye.